Wednesday is a tough day to get through as it's smack dab in the middle of the work week. But the one thing that gets me through it is the knowledge that new horror comics will be at my local comic book store waiting for me to check out. Remember, this is not a set of reviews, just a list of what you'll find when you head to the comic shop this week in Horror Comics. May 24th, 2023. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Let's check out This Week in Comics Horror, May 24th, 2023. There's rarely a week where the female form isn't featured on select covers from specific comic book publishers. That's why I take it upon myself to point out horror comics with covers featuring ass and titties. Let's start out with Plan 59 from Outer Space Number 3. Very little by way of plot is given for this series, except for the fact that it seems like it takes place 50 plans after Ed Wood's Plan 9 from Outer Space, and that cover sports some What's better than a cover with ass and titties? A cover sporting four ass, 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 and eight titties. That's what. Naughty and Nice, Red Sonia, Vampirella, number one, sports one bodacious cover. But if you think that's cheesecake, check out this one exhibiting Vampirella's assets. And just when you think a cover can't get more booby, Vampirella vs. the Superpowers says hold my G-string. Though you wouldn't know it by that cover, this one pits Vampy against some classic public domain characters from Comics Golden Age. It's all brought to you by Dan Abnett and Pascal Qualano. Go Boobs! Indie comics are where it's at when it comes to comic book horror that are going to try their damnedest to tingle your spine. The first indie on the block this week is Drexler, number one, by Bob Sally and Nathan Kelly. It follows a detective trying to solve a string of vicious murders who has no choice but to ask her brother, a literal monster named Drexler, who is just as dangerous as the killer itself. Sounds fun. My buddy Steve Orlando and artist Sebastian Pires have dueling exorcists who have to begrudgingly team up to take on the seven deadly sins while battling their own demons in Exorcists Never Die. They beat Sloth in the first issue, but this second issue brings on Lust, and with these exorcists passed in consideration, that spells trouble for the both of them. Dead Seas No. 6 from IDW has a ship attempting to survive some very polluted waters. The thing is, they're polluted with more than just oil and gas, but evil spirits. This looks to be the final issues of this eco-horror comic. Over at Dark Horse, All Eight Eyes' first issue surprised the hell out of me. It reminded me of the Fisher King in a lot of ways, as a homeless man enlightens an aimless 20-something to a world just under our purview inhabited by giant alien spider monsters. Can't wait to see what kind of webby fun I'll find in this new issue from Steve Fox and Piotr Kowalski. Dan Panosian and Dalibor Talajic finally unleash what's on the black tapes, which are the final songs made by an over-the-top shock rocker before his onstage death. Black tape number four is the last issue of this rock and roll horror series from AWA Upshot. At Boom Studios, Jude Ellison S. Doyle, wow, that's a handful of a name, and Letiza Catonici questions the motives of the neighbors in a new town where there is a suspicious lack of children. Dive into the mystery in this third issue. And over at Image, Spawn and Terry take a trip to New York City and find that there's a new influx of tourism to a specific spot that may have sinister leanings. King Spawn number 22 is by the usual crew of Sean Lewis and Javier Fernandez. 
Let's swing over to the big two and see what scares they have to offer. The corner of DC, formerly known as Vertigo, brings the dead boy detectives back to solving supernatural crimes in this final issue to this Sandman Universe series from Pornsack Pichacoat and Jeff Stokely. And at Marvel, the evil mask-wearing Spidey villain Hallows Eve finally takes on Spider-Man for the first time with her new demonic powers. I'm still digging this new horror-esque character from Erica Schultz and Michael Dowling. The books I'm looking most forward to are not from the big two. These three are my bona fide surefire winners of the week. First is Mark Millar, the highly successful writer who dared steal my own name, teams up with ex-X-Men artist Juanan Ramirez for Nightclub about a trio of kids who become vampires and then decide to use their powers to be superheroes. It looks like this series is drawing to a close as the longtime vampires have finally caught up to our trio of heroes and they aren't happy with the exposure the heroes are getting. On top of that, it's only $1.99, which is the cheapest comic you're going to find on the stands these days. I love the wild take on Slashers and Small Town Secrets by Justin Jordan and Brom Revel. The fourth issue of Horror has the sole survivor, Jess, uncovering a plot that goes back decades. Vivid art and some truly diabolical writing is going on in this book. And being a sucker for paranormal investigations, Blue Book is one of my favorite comics being released at the moment. While I know the story of Betty and Barney Hill and their encounter with a UFO, it's never been told in comic book format, and James Tiny and the Fourth and Michael Avon Oming presents this story in new and creative ways. Every time this book comes out, I look forward to reading it as soon as I get home from the store, and sometimes I can't even wait and just read it in the car. That's it for this week's haul. That was 15 horror comics on the shelves this week. Surely there's something in there that you'll find worth reading. Let me know which ones look good to you down in the comments.